Okay, welcome back to part 8 of our uh, series on uh, building a trimarine. Um, in, this, uh, in this video I'm going to show you uh, how we shape up the, the stem, the outer stem. And I am going to uh, epoxy the whole outer hull before I uh, put the fiberglass on the, on the, on the chines. And uh, I'm going to uh, fiberglass the butt joints and I'm going to fiberglass the, the stem itself. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'll just take you to, to this part of the video and uh, if, you, if you like the video uh, uh, please subscribe. Okay so uh, this is fixed. It's the morning sorry. It's the morning after. Uh, this is fixed in. I'm just starting to plane this up now. He said make it into a near pint. We have our, cent our center line here that will give us a good guidance. Well, I want to get this one done first, uh, the end grain. So that's what I've been started doing. And that's nearly done. And you can use the plane. Uh, you see, it's going like that. That's uh, too much. And we use a ruler. So to make a fair curve, the ruler will go like this. And that is perfect. In other words, there's no hump. So it's the ruler is bending, the ruler is bending, and that's going in with that. I'm going to uh, chamfer, so to speak, down these. Uh, it's kind of going to be done by eye. Uh, it does say at the water line it should be a point, but down here it won't be a point. In the thing, this looks like it's just rounded off in the the drawing, but I think it shouldn't be really rounded off. I think it needs to be planed down to an angle. So we will go at this. I go down and lower down. I can get a bigger plane if I want to. So you go, I'm going to take my time at this because I want this. This is the front of the boat and it has to look nice. You can feel where some of the epoxy is on the wood that we didn't clean it off and you can feel it on the plane and the epoxy is harder than the wood of course uh, because the, the inner stem was a little bit off we we're able to take it out with this by what I do is I run a slash ruler along like this because of the curve and then we can see the curve. Now we are going to have to fare it a little bit in here. I can't get the plane in there. And I'll end up having no stem left. And that won't be a good idea. We have two almost to a pint there. Uh, this is almost. You're talking about almost perfect there. When we put this in like this and there. So we will, we will fill this in uh, and shape it. We will shape it into a. A, a, a fair uh, curve. We will, I'll take the edge off this, of course. Like this, but I have to be very careful going up near the top because there's nearly nothing left. I didn't cut the bottom uh, because uh, I'm going to wait till the boat is up, and then we will use the uh, hand plane, uh, hand saw, and we will cut along uh, where the, the oh. deck deck board goes, and that's a long time away. So, so I'm just going to round this off like it shows in the photographs. But I have sloped this one in. It doesn't look like it's done much. And we will sand it in with the sander. And then we will, we will fill this, we will fill this uh, here with uh, fillers so that, uh, so that it smooths in, you know. You won't get the plane in here. You cannot get the plane in there. You can sand in a little bit. But we'll take the rough edge off the front. And that will mean that it will go through the water smoother. Okay, now we, I have this all uh, smoothed off. It's rounded in the thing. It's coming into a pint. I rounded it down a little bit this way. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that. But I doubt this is perfect line here when you put a piece of metal on it. And it's level in here as well, almost. It will need a little, little bit of fillers and that's it. Uh, so we're happy enough, um, happy enough with that. So uh, next job I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the whole boat in epoxy. The whole, uh, the whole hull, uh, uh, the whole outer hull. Uh, and then I'm going to put the fiberglass straight onto it. So we're going to work fairly fast. So I'm going to use a roller, I think. Uh, 
I've never done this before. <laughs> like most things I haven't done before. Rex is going to help me uh, mix the stuff. Uh, I don't have a clue how much I need, but I'm going to say I'm going to go 200 milliliters for starters, and then we will work our way from them. Yeah, and we'll see how much that covers. And, but we're going to work really, really fast, so I'm not going to show you how we mix it up. We mix it up, I showed you before. Okay, I've mixed up uh, about uh, 150 milliliters, so I'm going to see how the roller works. This is a sponge roller, I'm not so sure. But I'm going to work quick. Now, I, the, you, you need to, if you don't have ventilation, I have great ventilation here, right? I have a big fan there and the door is open down this end and the door is open the other end. So, I think the secret is to work as quick as you can. Mostly like when you be working with paint, the speed. And uh, I'm going to coat the whole lot of it there. And I'm looking down along it with the thing, make sure it's got the same amount. Uh, when I put in the... When, uh, I really need to get a, a, I'll pour a bit there and then I can take it onto the roller. For doing the sides, I don't want, I can't uh, because I don't have gravity. You have a charcoal uh, mask. I have only a P1, P100, which is particles. And I don't have charcoal, it's the one that you use when you're spray painting. So I'm going to continue on with that and uh, uh, Rex is going to mix some more for me in a minute and uh, I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Roller job really worked out well, a lot better than I expected. The roller seems to be a good quality, which is unusual. Over here we get lots of cheaper stuff. It's cheap, but it's, che it's not as cheap as the next one. Uh, now the next job I'm going to do, before this gets tacky, I'm going to put the fiberglass on. Now we don't have tape uh, because we can't get tape so I'm after cutting the as I said in the earlier part we cut it into two inch strips diagonally from normal cloth uh, 200 gram cloth which is six ounces um, it will take a little bit more epoxy I don't know if I can do it with a roller or not this is not a bubble roller uh, not one you know the metal ones you have for taking out it uh, we will we will put I will put on an extra little bit with the roller uh, we need assistance. I need assistance for this because uh, I cut a two inch and it's when, when you're cutting the cloth it's not uh, When you're cutting the cloth, it's difficult to, to manage it because it starts going all over the place So I think the second layer that I'm putting on later We will probably put in instead of two inch. I'll put on three inches So it will it'll help taper it back in. That's just my idea for now uh, I'm sure it. I'm sure it's okay, but uh, we are going to we're going to do that we're going to do that now so uh, Rex is going to come Rex can you come down here we're going to put the fiberglass on that these brushes you throw them away afterwards so which is the middle one this one so it's tapered on the end here that's fine you'll go to just beyond where the cut was oh I've got it the wrong way around it's okay it's fine Nine gently, don't stretch it because if you stretch it, you're going to knock it out of, uh, you're going to make it thinner. So I'm going to try the roller on it. If the roller don't work, I'll go back to the way I was doing it on the inner, inner parts of the giant. Just make sure it's in the center like that. So I'll try the roller on that and see what happens. No, that's not going to work because it needs to come out like this. So. Well, it could do it. You could pat it with the roller, I suppose, the same as you would with the brush. But we don't want any bubbles in this, so you would probably. I need to stand up on, uh, higher over here. A few strands there. That's the problem when you're cutting it. You will have strands on the side. I will uh, use a bit of tape, uh, a little bit more uh, resin with this. Not a lot more, but I'll use a little bit more. And I'm tapping out. I'm tap, just patting it. So, so patting, that would be the word, patting. 
uh, I'll be just patting it in, then I won't get any bubbles then. Well, we hope so anyway. There's no bubbles showing now and there's no uh, high pints because if you do, you have to take them off afterwards. And the, we're wetting out, the fiberglass is wetting out just fine now. But uh, in the center, there was more epoxy, so it doesn't need, a, it just needs a little bit extra. So I done it on the other side there and it was a bit messy uh, because it was a real hairy one. Uh, I shouldn't have really used it. Uh, and there was a bit of epoxy on it. Uh, two inch? No, I'm going to do three inch the next time. So I put it down along the chine after I put the epoxy on it. I put epoxy on this a second time and now I'm going to brush it. I'm going to do it with the brush. I'm going to pat it in again, like we were showing you earlier. And we're going to do that down all along the... the is, am I on that? Yeah. I'm going to do that all along the, the, the chines and the back of the boat as well. And uh, so when I get back to you, we will have it all... When, when I get back to you, we'll have all this done and we're, uh, we will go for lunch then. And then we will... Uh, after lunch, I will... Uh, on a, another coat. Okay, that one came out better than expected now. Uh, some of it, there's a few little lump bits on some of it. Uh, the biggest problem I have was that I cut this uh, fiberglass last week and I'd say the dogs got tangled in it uh, and that's why it's hairy on the outside and that's going to cause me a little bit of a problem later on. But anyway, I'm going to, as everyone says you should do, I'm going to give it the second coat straight away while it's tacky and it's tacky still a little bit and I am going to uh, I'm going to continue where I was I'm going to start where I, well I done the back first the last time but I'm going to be up closer to you this came out really really well I think it did anyway uh, you can't even see the thing and it's not it's not overdone. Some of it's overdone and the paint dripped down a little bit. We're going to have to sand that off again. From the instructions it says put the skeg in after you do the, the fiberglass on the, the center chine and then fiberglass over that. And they're asking to do it with, put hot glue. I hate doing that. No, what we will do is I will, uh, I will put it on after, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it on with a thicken up a little bit of this and glue it on in the morning we'll fiberglass over it which should be about 14 hours afterwards. So I'm going to do, I'm going to continue where we were earlier and I'm going to put on a, I'm after cutting the hairs off this brush. If you want to know why it's a bit easier, I did it on the last coat, not, uh, on the inside but not here. Uh, you can spread the stuff better and it's easier to put it, lock it in. So guess how long one piece is. Make sure that you, when you're doing this, that you, uh, wherever your joint was before, you don't go the same place. So I'm going to, I didn't check that now. So there, I'm giving you, a, I'm giving you a, a tip. But I'll give you one tip. Don't cut the, fi don't cut the fiber glass till you're ready for it. Well, better still buy the tape if you can, but don't uh, don't uh, cut it and leave it around, especially if you have dogs or children or anything like that around. They may uh, it'll get tangled, and it got tangled. So I will put this on. I will make sure that we're not coming on the same joint. If we are, I will not go to the end. Where is my last joint? My last joint is there. No, we're not overlapping the last one. So I'll put this on like this. I'll we'll just hold it on a little bit like that and try and just hold it in the corner like this I imagine tape would be a lot easier but this is a nice piece now because it, we only cut it an hour ago myself we cut it together uh, so that it don't get tangled up so I'm going to uh, brush that in now do one side first. Now remember, you can cut off later on. You, you can cut off pieces off, off, like off the bottom here later on. So 
So I'm going to do this with the whole, uh, with uh, all the chimes, and oh, with all the chimes plus I'm I'm going to do the chimes, but I'm going to do the butt chimes as well, of course. I've done the butt chimes one coat. I didn't tell you that, did I? I didn't show you myself doing that, but uh, no, I'm keeping with two inches because that's what the that's what uh, that's what the plan suggests. And going over it might make it even more difficult to sand at a later date. So I'm going to go in like this, like this, look. And then you won't have any, and then we will go over here. And if you need a little bit more glue, just get it there and take your time. So anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to do all, all the rest of this and then I'm going to put in the, the skeg at the back. I'm going to hold it in with a clamp, not hot glue. And tomorrow we will fiber glass around it and we will put in the, the runner bars or whatever you call them. What do you call the runner bars? Um, I have to keep remembering the names on them. They are, they're, 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 they're called um, keel strips. So we'll be putting them in with a screw from the bottom. Now, make sure you don't get any bubbles in this. Okay, thank you very much for watching uh, part eight of our uh, video on building the, the triamarang. Uh, uh, in the next in the next part, uh, we're moving fairly fast. We will be uh, we will be turning the boat upside down very soon. Back back, sorry, we'll be turning the boat back around now because we will have the bottom of the boat. Uh, we're going to fair the bottom of the boat, we're going to sand it and have it all nice uh, where the fiberglass is. So the next video, hopefully in about four, four days or something like that, three or four days, uh, I'll have the next video and the boat will be uh, ready for maybe testing in the water before we finish the inside. So if you like uh, this video or any of our other videos on, on this channel, uh, this uh, much appreciate if you subscribe to me. I'm Pascal and thank you. Thank you for watching.